Hello and welcome to the big picture. The elections to the Raj Sabha, which is a biennial affair, however, has this time caused a lot of controversies. We have seen what has happened in Jharkhand, where the elections to the Raj Sabha has been countermanded. A completely unprecedented event. It has never happened before in the history of the Indian Parliament. Why has this come to such a stage where the Raj Sabha elections have become so controversial? How are we going to deal with these kind of issues in future? To discuss all this, I have here with me Mr. Nilod Palbasu, a CPIM Central Committee member and a member of Raj Sabha twice. And along with him is Mr. Bharat Bhushan, a senior editor, and also uh, on the phone line by the Chief Election Commissioner, Mr. S.Y. Qureshi. So let me start from my studio guest first, uh, Nilod Pal. This is a, what has happened in Jharkhand is completely unprecedented. But many people say that you know this was coming. Yes, uh, actually it was waiting to happen. Yes. Uh, it clearly rings in my uh, ear still, I mean, when this uh, new uh, legislation was brought forward by the government. Uh, that was in, and, two, in and 2003. And the Congress and the Congress and the BJP. In 2003, yeah, yeah. the NDA government had brought Both this. the Congress and BJP, uh, we saw quite a bonhoming. I mean, uh, people like uh, Dr. Manmohan Singh, they were a little embarrassed that uh, having been a resident of uh, Delhi, he was representing the state of Assam. So, uh, the domicile provision which was there in the constitution for uh, council of uh, uh, states uh, was removed and together uh, with it a lethal blow was also delivered by making uh, the voting uh, for Raj Sabha in the uh, legislative assemblies open. Yes. So it was no, more, remember sec it that was no uh, more secret ballot. There was uh, 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 maybe uh, we uh, uh, at that time we compiled figures over this uh, 50 year period. Uh, maybe uh, 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 less than 10% uh, people actually misused that provision of the uh, ordinary place of residence the domicile, uh, to the domicile. Uh, uh, get through. And now uh, they said that uh, there is a lot of corruption. but. Uh, Ultimately, what was done, that uh, uh, corruption on a retail basis was converted into corruption on a wholesale basis because some of the parties, if they can be bought. And uh, I think it would be a very uh, important uh, uh, journalistic investigative work uh, if uh, for the last few years, the kind of people uh, that have come in, and uh, I think uh, particularly Jharkhand, has uh, gained a certain amount of notoriety. Number of people who have direct links with corporate houses have come in getting votes with, with, uh, with uh, more, more extra votes which they could have otherwise spared. I mean, uh, it, is, it is sheer display of uh, very, very uh, opulence and, and uh, all kinds of uh, naked display of money power. Bharat, uh this has been a problem for the last several years, as uh, Nilotpal was pointing out. 2003, this amendment was brought in by the NDA government, saying that you know, it will bring about more transparency in, in, in the elections to the uh, Raj Sabha. But in the, the, the last nine years' experience doesn't seem to have uh, you know, worked, worked the way it was supposed to have. You know, because money power exists uh, uh, you know, uh, separate from this issue of transparency and domicile. Uh, you've had over a period of time the, uh, the uh, Rajya Sabha being reduced into House of Lords in courts. You know, anybody who can buy a seat gets in. You've had uh, you know what was uh, Vijay Malia's contribution to uh, Rajya Sabha or Anil Ambani's contribution or uh, other nominees uh, of political parties who come there. You know, a farmer king uh, uh, went in there. Somebody who makes watches goes in there. So it became uh, a, a point of vanity to be called a member of Parliament. And if you could buy your seat through domicile, without domicile, through transparency, without transparency, people did it. Simultaneously, what the domicile thing did, removing mm. the domicile provision, was that uh, politicians who were unelectable, who could not contest direct elections to Lok Sabha, came in through the back door. Nilotpal, I just want to, you know, the original 
uh, the constitution makers when they when they when they there was a lot of discussion when the constitution was being uh, you know the the in the constituent assembly whether there should be a second house at all or not and then finally they came to a conclusion that there has to be a second house it has to be a bicameral system and the whole uh, idea behind creating this upper house was was that you know people who cannot get elected to lok sabha but who have something to contribute to this country should be brought in there i i, I think uh, girish uh, that is not the whole picture actually uh, in the constituent assembly debate if you see i mean there was very scholarly debate yes. and it was found that in a country of india size and diversity and uh, with the federal nature that we have right uh, it was impossible to do without a second chamber and the second chamber was uh, 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 envisaged as a council of state yes so so because uh, it was it was really uh, awesome the the foresight of the constitution makers right. because congress had a brute majority and and they found that in that brute majority if only the party aspect comes into play i mean it might sub submerge the the provincial entities that we have in the country therefore as distinct from a political representation in the lok sabha you must have a state wise representation in the council of states right so it is in that context that the whole idea of domicile came in and it was built into the uh, constitution and you see i just don't blame only the political parties because after this bill was through some of us the left parties we opposed to the name many uh, independent members and many right thinking people also oppose the move right. I, i i remember that at that point in time parties like telugu desham after we spoke and opposed they came and privately congratulated us but said that our hands are tied because we are part of the nda therefore we have to uh, go along with the bill but after that people very respected people like kuldeep nair went to the supreme court. right we will we will discuss the supreme court and uh, what happened later we need to go into a short break now we'll we'll come back very soon please keep watching welcome back we are discussing the rajya sabha elections and what has happened in jharkhand and we are looking at how we should tackle this issue uh, i am now joined by mr hk dua a, a member of the rajya sabha a nominated member of the rajya sabha welcome mr dua uh, so dua we are discussing about the what has happened in jharkhand and uh, you know it's a completely unprecedented thing that that the election commission went ahead and countermanded the elections there so you think that this is as i asked mr nirodpal also earlier this was something which was waiting to happen isn't it certainly what has happened is shameful yes and election commission deserves all the praises right for doing something which should have been done earlier also right it is not the first time it has happened but later on they discovered much later that this had happened yes or suspicion was there it had happened but this time they caught someone red and it now It required courage. It required clarity. Now, what was happening was, sir, sir, Mr. Dua, I'll come back to you. But uh, you know, uh, Mr. Dua was talking about things which have happened before. You know, why and how the uh, election commission decided to take this kind of a decision is is something which we will hear from Mr. Kureishi, who will be joining us very soon. But you think something like this is going to help matters in the future? no i think you know either you should abolish the rajya sabha completely because uh, you know if it was a council of the states it doesn't fulfill that role any longer uh, if it is just uh, for accommodating people who have who, uh, paid money they can you know sort of satisfy their vanity in ways other than parliamentary ah. uh, i think the domicile thing should be brought in if you really want it to be the council of the states you have to be domicile of the state and you have to represent the interests of uh, that state you can't be one dr manmohan singh from punjab and delhi and represent assam Uh, you can't be, uh, you know, X, Y, and Z from some some state, and you go to your friends in Gujarat or uh, elsewhere. Let, let, let me let me bring uh, Nilodpal in on this. Nilodpal, 
you know, what uh, Bharat is saying is bring back the domicile thing. One of the political parties which uses, which has, you know, used this domicile thing, which has misused the domicile thing, if I say, has been your party. Some of your members, though not being residents of West Bengal, have been getting elected from West Bengal. So think, this is I something which will cannot, affect compare. all the political we parties. Have, we have never done this in the past. Only when it was removed and we needed somebody who was articulate and uh, who could articulate the concerns of the people of that state. I mean, uh, then, I mean, uh, there should be uh, common ground rules for everybody. So once it was opened up, I mean, you cannot, this was never done by the CPIM or the left in the past uh, while that domicile uh, provision was the, there in the law. But it is only that uh, post uh, uh, new law. But today that, you are no better than the others because you are doing the same. No, I think I think that is that is a very uh, simplistic way at looking things. <coughs> and uh, if you if you bring that uh, provision, because we were uh, in favour of retaining that position, I, I mean, you Mr. Dua, let me let me bring in Mr. Dua. Mr. Dua, see, this is a this is a problem which all political parties face. Mr. Nilot Palbasu says that you know the, the domicile thing was was should not have been removed, but they have utilized they have made a capital out of the out out of it I mean, once I, I, once it I has mean, been removed. This is, this is a problem which which every political party face. So you think this removing of the domicile clause is something uh, you know which is good, but it has to be controlled. I have a feeling the domicile clause should have been retained. Huh for the Rajya Sabha, and Rajya Sabha should not be abolished. There I will defend him, <laughs> not because I am there now, but uh, it provides for a revision. Lok Sabha can pass a le legislation because of the electoral consideration, immediate electoral consideration from pressure, pressions may be aroused on some issue. So there will be some pause available for the legislation. But domicile clause is meant for the Council of States. If this is a Council of States, the domicile call, cause is a must. It's not in just an upper house. It is council of states. Right. So the domicile is is, is, is you embedded. Think it's, it in is the, intrinsic. In the, it's intrinsic it's, it's to the. It's embedded in the concept of council uh, of states. Yes. No, it should uh, be there. But oh, very quick. No, no. no let, let, put, let him finish. Now yeah. you want. Now you can't put it back. But this has nothing to do with what has happened in Jharkhand. It's not the domicile problem. That it's not at all. No. It's it certainly. It is sheer case of corruption. Yes. It is. It is. Uh, vitiating the electoral atmosphere and an attempt to change the composition of the upper house. There are three basic objections to this. So this is nothing to do with domicile. Corruption can take place for somebody living in Jharkhand and corruption can take place for somebody. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's happened so whether in, the, it's happened whether in the Karnataka. Brief, it's happened whether in the Karnataka. Whether the briefcase has come as, uh, from... Uh, Bharat, Bharat Bhushan was pointing out earlier. Before you said the same thing. That whether you know, the briefcase... Yes. 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 About, about I, I, that's our point. No, no, Nilod, but well, I'll, let me go to Mr. Kureshi. Whether the briefcase has come from Calcutta or Bombay or Bangalore, Sir, that's not the important point. Mr. Dua, Mr. Kureshi, S.Y. Kureshi, the chief... The Chief Election Commissioner is on the phone line with us. Mr. Qureshi, if you can hear me. Yes, yes, I can. Uh, Mr. Qureshi, this was an unprecedented step which, uh, which the Commission took of countermanding the elections in uh, Jharkhand. You, uh, how did you come to this decision? Was there no other alternative? Uh, no, no, we, uh, there was no alternative because we uh, had been concerned about the way things were going. And when we come across a situation when money is caught on the uh, morning of the election, which is relatable to the candidate. Mm. So they had no option because it was, uh, in France, was very clear that this money was going to be used for uh, negotiating the election. And purity of election is uh, sacrosanct. And right. therefore, we had to act. Is this the first time that you have come across such situations? Uh, or you have, you have heard about such things in the past and, you know, you were not able to act in time? Yes. Yeah, this, uh, this is the first time that we had actionable evidence okay. because, you know, the money power in the election has been a concern to us for, uh, across the board, you know, all elections of all kinds. Right. But uh, in the Rajya Sabha, of course, uh, for the, lately we had been uh, hearing uh, such complaint, but this is the time when we had uh, an evidence which we could act upon. Okay. Uh, let me, let me, uh, Mr. Qureshi, please stay on. Uh, let me go to Nilotpal. Bas Nilotpal, you are trying to make two points on... Uh... On this Raj Sabha question, right. I think it is absolutely necessary because uh, two points. Again, um, in, in, in India, the kind of size that we have, you see, if you have only one house, in the heat of the movement, uh, our legislation which is hastily conceived can go through. You have to have a break. Secondly, uh, 
as the constitution makers had envisaged the way constitution uh, arrangement will function, see two major factors, religion, caste, money, the way they have play, uh, come to play a role in shaping the electoral outcomes and the composition of the legislature, uh, you see, often you see people defeated who might have otherwise uh, won that election had uh, these factors not played a role. So in that case, I mean, do we uh, uh, create space for such people in participating in the process of uh, governance in the place of contribution towards national development and so on and so forth. So it is not always that people are coming through the back door, but you have to also create space for people, given the rough and tumble and the uh, senior size is, of uh, absolutely. The, the, the electoral Mr. Tuba, there is, uh, process. There is today. absolutely no doubt. Nobody is, going, nobody is arguing that several very eminent people who have been in Raj Sabha, who otherwise would never have been able to get elected from Lok Sabha, and even now it happens, and in yes. the future also it will happen, that we need to give space for such kind of people. We need to have, have some way in which we can get the best minds, in, you know, to help run the governance or scrutinize the government. government. Actually, in an ideal electoral system, yes. these kind of people should be elected also. Right. That's not being provided, you know, in the present kind of, as caste, communalism, criminalization, that is influencing the election in a big way. As the passions can be taken care of by the, the measure going to the upper house also, but character of the Lok Sabha also needs to needs to needs a lot of improvement. Not right. only of the Rajya Sabha, the Lok Sabha should be elected and uh, pe people of uh, all sorts, uh, criminal with criminal background and corrupt corrupt background, or those who can afford to spend about twenty crores or thirty crores or fifty crore rupees, they can get elected. Now that's also vitiating right. money, the criminalization and the caste. They are all influencing the Lok Sabha election. Right. Rajya Sabha can can some extent. Sometimes the political parties can bring it, bring in talent through the Rajya Sabha route, but, but will in, they? Bring in the there same are in, people, sir. There are instances. The same the, people with criminal background, the same people with caste there, there uh, prejudices, there, there, there money, money bags, uh, uh, there, there money problems. and uh, money bags, ill gotten wealth. Have, 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 have landed in the Rajya Sabha, and often they are in the committees. Often they are in the committees yeah. in which the, they are having creating the, a conflict of interest, running their business, conflict of conflict interest. Conflict of interest. Let me go to now, Mr. Now lately, some some remedial measures have been taken, right. but there are instances they were on the committee. Absolutely. Even if they are not on the committee, membership the house gives them the cloud, the advantage to influence the decision about I, their I industry, must tell you what that, they are that, running. That, let me let me go to uh, that I'll, election I'll commission back. also. Since Mr. Kureshi is there, yes. You see, I mean these kind of steps. While they are welcome, they are very few and far between. For Mr. example, earlier during uh, assembly elections, we had one, again, MP uh, uh, of the Raj Sabha from Jharkhand, who was uh, found with a uh, um, sack full of money uh, traveling to Gohati. Right. And, Mr. And, Mr. And, Mr. And Kureshi, about. Mr. Kureshi uh, you know, your, the action which you have taken is commendable. Even somebody like Mr. Adwani has praised your action, but Mr. Nilodpal Basu feels that it is few and far between. Well, yeah, but at least there, there has to be a beginning, because when uh, things were really going out of hand, at least we, we had this uh, opportunity to uh, send the right message and the right signal. Yes. Because, you know, whatever is vitiating the uh, polity of India needs to be handled. And as uh, I just heard um, on my phone, you know, on the election to Lok Sabha, Nidhan Sabha, every level, yes. there have been problems in, uh, like uh, criminals and politics and uh, money power and caste, commun communal appeals and all that. All these need to be checked and there are laws uh, uh, available. And the model code also uh, deals with these issues. Right. Mr. Yes. Mr. Mr. Kureshi, what, what next in Jharkhand, now that you have countermanded the elections, what, what, what next? And how, what kind of action will be envisaged against these uh, candidates who, uh, you know, the, the money which has been seized apparently belongs to them? So what kind of action? Because we have seen in, in the Lok Sabha elections also, or in assembly elections also, you people, you know, manage to find certain things, but, you know, there is no follow-up action. Would, you, would we find the same thing happening here also? Well, you know, the only follow-up action that we have, have possible is uh, to file an FIR. If you recall in Jharkhand uh, itself, right. uh, last year when uh, in a sting operation by a news channel, 
formalities were found accepting money. Yes. So we had uh, registered FIRs against them, and the, the, after the FIR is filed, the judicial process takes over. Right. Uh, so the, that similar thing will, will happen here. And of course, when we the, set in motion uh, the, the process of election uh, all over again, so um, that, what, that, Mr. That, Mr. Mr. Kureshi, what happens if the same candidates file their nominations again? You don't have you don't have the powers to ban them from contesting elections at this ab point of time. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. That fortunately that is the situation because who is qualified to contest or not that's not decided by us. Yes. So uh, when uh, people with very serious uh, heinous offences and repeated offences, uh, if they can contest, uh, in this case. Uh, uh, even if it, uh, in the long run it is proved that their money was used. Right. But there is no disqualification. Mr. Qureshi, do you think this action of, of the Commission will lead to at least a serious debate on the reforms which are necessary in the Raj Sabha uh, elections also? Or I do you, do, does the Commission have any recommendations on this? Yes, on no, no, absolutely. No, we hope that the electoral reforms, which we have been talking about for years now, right. and in fact, uh, I must say that the government had shown some seriousness last year. When uh, the law minister uh, visited the election commission thrice, twice Mr. Molly, once Mr. Khurshid, and they promised that the electoral reform bill will come in winter session. Right. It didn't come. Right. Then we were hoping that it will come in the budget session, but it is not listed. I think uh, time has come when uh, political parties, senior leaders, should uh, the get together because you know it is doing a great damage to the reputation of the whole system. Absolutely, absolutely. Please stay on, Mr. Kureshi. I'll come back to you, Mr. Dua. Uh, you know, I he has made a very important point. He says that the he, he didn't say this, but what he implies is there seems to be a lack of political will to. Uh, you know, bring about these reforms. I fully agree with him, and Mr. Qureshi has been taking a lot of steps, and this is one of the things he has done, shows vigilance, and in time, in future, I think he will ask for flying squares or PCR vans for manning the elections. Yes. We'll have to do much more. Maybe helicopter. But he also. has been recommending <laughs> particularly early uh, decriminalization of electoral politics. He has suggested reforms. And now, one of the reforms is Supreme Court had earlier advised the election commission to go in for is that don't let criminals who have been convicted for charge who have been charges Charged have been cheating. framed against home yes for the crimes which can fetch them two years plus of uh, punishment the, if the charges have been framed by the court they should not be allowed yes election commission earlier before uh, mr Qureshi joined called the meeting of political parties all the political parties oppose this reform. Now, for lack of consensus, this is pending. Possibly the CPM, yes. uh, why, uh, possibly why? the CPM had some reservation on uh, with other, other political parties, but all other parties, I, I'm definite, they opposed that on the framing of the charges by the court. Now, political consensus is no, necessity. Two, two quick uh, why, points. Uh, again, 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 you see... No, you, please, I, you please respond to what Mr. Dhar said. I'm responding. Yes. But at the same time, you must also recognize that whatever reform has happened, and particularly this moral code of conduct, is a voluntary agreement of all the political parties. There is no legal backing. And that... Uh, Mr. You think there should be a legal backing to that? No, no need, because uh, 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 the, the EC has full authority to enforce it, and it has the backing of all the political parties, and there is absolutely no problem in the enforcement uh, of the me, MCC. Let, let but, me just, but, let me just, but just quickly, yes. I mean, on that question, the political will has to be shown by the government. Because Mr. the legislative process needs the government to actually come forward and table a bill move a bill. Without that, Mr. the parliament cannot... Right, right. Mr. Qureshi, we are running out of time. Mr. Qureshi, do you yeah. think the model code of conduct needs a legal backing? Not at all, not at all. In fact, it will really undo the model code. Okay. Because the moment um, it becomes a, a law, mm. it will go out of the domain of election commission. Right. And here we have to act uh, like a, a fire brigade. We have to uh, take preventive action on the spot. Okay. Okay, yes. thank you, Mr. Qureshi. Thanks, thanks for joining us. Uh, Bharat, last, last words to you. We completely run short of time. You think this should trigger off a major, serious debate in this country, bring about ref electoral reforms. As Mr. Uh, Dua was pointing out, interestingly, even for, for Raj Sabha, 
elections there should be a direct voting by the people from the from the particular states you think that's that's one of the ideas which can work well uh, i don't know i don't hmm. know but you know girish if you think this is going to start a debate and it's going to start a process of political reform and that this discussion will uh, come from our political parties i think you're likely to be disappointed <laughs> i think this will be swept under the carpet and we'll forget about it as we've forgotten about a lot of other things yes so you cannot just reform the rajya sabha so dua was right you need to reform the entire uh, electoral system and rajya sabha reforms can be part of that right. then after that if you want to decide whether you want separate uh, uh, elections for rajya sabha direct election which incidentally some countries have absolutely uh, uh, in us you, you, the, 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 the senators elected that way absolutely yes in myanmar <laughs> but <laughs> in saying myanmar. that okay. you, know, you can you can look at that <laughs> <laughs> okay that we are completely run out of time but i think uh, at least today's discussion has flagged the various issues which have been plaguing the elections to the raj sabha hopefully this will lead to further debate in this country and also some kind of reforms which will see that the kind of unsavory elements which have been entering the raj sabha will be stopped thank you very much for watching thanks to all my guests mr s y kureshi chief election commissioner mr h k dua mr nilothpal basu and bharat bhushan thank you we'll come back with another issue on the big picture please keep watching